Hey, what's up guys? Edward here with another DJI Mavic 2 Pro tutorial. Today I want to go over the intelligent flight modes, including hyperlapse. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to simply set yourself up to take all the quick shots and the hyperlapses. In this tutorial, I'm not going to go over how to edit your hyperlapses. I'll just show you how to set yourself up for the pre-production. If you want to know how to edit hyperlapses the way I do, then click in the eye in the top corner. If this video helps you at all at any point, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, leave a comment below if you want to leave any productive feedback to this video. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, guys, the first intelligent flight mode that we're going to go into is hyperlapse. So I recommend you go into photo mode first to select your photo settings. So in my case, I'm gonna do one over 50 as shutter speed because I'm not really capturing any moving cars, so I don't really need um, a good looking motion blur. All I'm gonna capture are the clouds, which are really, really far away and they're huge, so I don't need long exposure. So I'm gonna keep this at one over 50 and my aperture I'll keep around 6.3 to keep it nice and sharp. I'm just going to go into the settings here and enable upwards gimbal tilt because I want to get some of the sky in here. Now I'm going to fly towards our subject here. Once we're in position we can go into our little remote, click on hyperlapse and our first in the list is free. So the thing that all the hyperlapse modes have in common is that they all take pictures completely autonomously. However, the difference between all the modes is the way the drone is piloted. So free is the only mode that requires you to move the drone while the drone is autonomously taking photos. This is personally not my favorite mode as I trust the drone a whole lot more to do everything on its own rather than have me guess how fast or how slow to go while the drone is taking photos. So as we can see here, all I'm doing is moving it backwards. I could go up, I could go down, I could ascend and, and right, I can do whatever I want. All right, our next mode in hyperlapse is circle. Circle is a very useful mode. Circle allows you to draw a box around the subject that you want to keep in frame, a lot like point of interest, but this is photos for hyperlapse. Once you draw the box, you just click on go, select your interval and your video length and your speed, select if you want it to go clockwise or counterclockwise, and then just press go. This is what it's going to look like. All right, next we have course lock. Course lock is my third favorite as it's not very precise. However, you select your interval, video length and speed. Then you're gonna choose your direction. And once you're ready to go, lock your direction and let the aircraft do its thing. Okay, last but not least, we have way... Okay, last but not least, we have waypoints. This is my favorite one personally. It allows you to set the exact start and end point of your hyperlapse. So right here, I'm going to select my end point. I want it to end like this, and I'm going to move to my starting point in the way that I want it to start. I'm gonna click plus, make sure that it's, it's selected on reverse so it can start from the end point. I'm gonna leave this video length at three seconds just to save some battery. The aircraft is gonna perform a 360 around itself just to make sure there's no obstacles in the way. And there we go. Okay guys, our next intelligent flight mode is quick shot. First one on the list is droney. All you have to do is select the subject that you want to perform the droney from. In this case, I will use me as a subject. And you can either draw a box around your subject or just tap on the little circle that's already there. And then it's just gonna count. Three, two, one. It's going to do everything on its own. Note, as soon as the operation has completed, your drone will come back to the starting point on its own, so that's good to keep in mind. Next one, we have circle. You can tap or draw a box around you. I just tap because it has already recognized me and it's going to perform a perfect circle around me. Okay, next we have helix. This one's pretty cool. Next, we have Rocket. Again, I'm not really going too deep into how all these modes work. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just click on Quick Shots, select the mode. Just as long as you have space around you, there's not really much to keep in mind. Now, speaking of having space around you, when you select Boomerang, you really want to make sure there's a lot of space around you. Because in my experience, Boomerang, Circle, and Helix are the ones that the drone needs the most amount of space for. 
And then Asteroid is a cool little feature that they added. I don't really see anybody in filmmaking using this feature, but I think it's a pretty cool feature to have to share on social media. Okay, next we have active track. Trace is going to follow the subject, whether the drone is behind or in front of the subject. That's the difference between trace and profile. Profile will only follow your profile. I wanted to test its capabilities to the fullest, and it seems to be doing a pretty great job. Yeah, much better than the previous version. Next we have profile, which seems to be doing a pretty good job as well. I can see these features being very useful for filmmaking. Next we have spotlight. Spotlight is going to do the exact same thing that Trace and Profile do in terms of the camera following the subject. But the cool thing about this feature is that you can move the drone anywhere you'd like it to go and the camera is going to stay pointed right at the subject. Note that if you tell it to go forwards and then it passes your axis, forward will become backwards and backwards will become forwards. So just keep that in mind when you're using this feature because you may be thinking the drone is going forwards but it's actually going backwards and that's the last thing we want. This tracking is actually quite impressive from the DJI Mavic 2. All I'm doing is telling it to go forwards and to the side. I went really close to it and it seems to be doing a really good job. Okay, so next we have point of interest. I'm gonna go back to our little cathedral here. So just draw a box around the subject that you wanna circle around. So this is the exact same thing for circle on hyperlapse, but the difference is that this is video and not photos. Also, this gives you the radius and the height and the speed, which you can adjust. And you can also choose between circle and going straight or backwards. Next, we have Waypoints 2.0, which I cover in the video in the eye in the corner. I invite you to click on that to check out this feature because it's an amazing feature and I went really deep into it. So I encourage you to check out that video right now and then come back to this video and check out the rest of the flight modes. With that being said, let's tap on Tap Fly. This can be a tricky one and also quite dangerous if your drone is in sport mode. So I encourage you to keep your drone in positioning mode or tripod mode for this feature. So you're literally going to tap anywhere on the screen and wherever you tap, the drone is going to fly in that direction. However, if you tapped above the horizon line, the drone is going to fly in the direction in which you tapped and ascend. If you tapped below the horizon, the drone is going to fly towards the position that you tapped on, but it's going to descend. Now for backward flying, this gets even trickier. Note the horizon line. So if you do tap above the horizon line, the drone is going to descend and fly in the opposite direction of where you tapped. So in this case, if you tap below the horizon line, the drone is going to ascend and fly in the opposite direction of that. If you tap above the horizon line, the drone is going to descend and fly in the opposite direction of where you tapped. Then we have free, which I'm probably never going to use, but, but it's the exact same thing as forward flying, but it allows you to tilt your camera while the drone is flying which I personally don't find very useful at all. I'd rather use any other mode rather than this one. Okay, great, so now last, we have cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is nothing fancy. All it is is exactly like flying in positioning mode. However, as soon as you stop flying, the drone is going to continue on the track that you were flying in for a couple of meters. What does that mean? Well, that means that instead of abruptly stopping, your drone is going to keep going for a couple of meters to make sure that it stops very smoothly in a cinematic way. This is the same for ascending, descending, and tilting. So for example, I'm gonna stop abruptly, as you can see, the drone just keeps going for a couple meters and then comes to a complete stop. So I recommend you never do this in sport mode. If you are doing it in sport mode, you wanna be in a huge field with no obstacles around. You wanna be in a huge radius with nothing around you as cinematic mode and sport mode is probably one of the most dangerous features that you can play around with. And that pretty much sums up all the intelligent flight modes. Thank you for watching guys. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.